Hi, I'm Jeremy Callahan, and this is to app or not to app. Mobile apps can help your business reduce costs, increase leads, and reduce manpower. An app is not a luxury item, it's a necessity. So let's get started making you money. Hey, welcome to the podcast today. Jeremy Callahan, excited for the topic, Five Ways to Monetize Mobile Apps. And let's just kick this thing off. Number one, the first thing about any app project you're involved in is it's got to make money, man. If you are not going to make money off of it and it's going to cost you a bunch to develop, then there's no reason to get involved in it. And everybody comes to me and they have really good ideas for apps. Well, not everybody has a good idea for an app, but most of them are pretty good ideas. And a lot of times, maybe five out of ten ideas I hear are excellent ideas but there's no way to actually make good money out of them. So it's very important that when you get started, before you get started, that you've got an idea of how to make money. So I'm going to give you some examples. We'll play a little game at the end. I'm going to give you an app idea. And if you can uh, tell me how that app's going to make money, then you're awesome. Okay, so let's get started. Um, and again, I'll just recap some of the things that, you know, that I always like to drive home is any app project you have, it has to solve basically three problems. So number one, it needs to increase leads or sales. Number two, it needs to reduce manpower. And number three, it needs to reduce costs. So there's a lot of people out there that have ideas for, like let's just take one of the best ideas everybody knows, which is Instagram. So Instagram just started out as a photo sharing app and they really didn't have a monetization strategy other than to get a ton and ton of users. So this is the apps I'm talking about are a little different. I want you to think about your business or the business you're in and how apps can actually increase uh, leads and sales, reduce costs, and reduce manpower. So with that in mind, let's talk about five solid ways to monetize an app. Um, number one, monthly subscriptions. So monthly subscriptions are basically the most popular way right now to make money with mobile apps. And really with websites as well. Uh, you see a lot of box of the month clubs and things like that. Like, uh, what's the box my daughter gets? It's pink. Every time they send it to her, it says, the goddess Erica Callahan. Or the amazing Erica Callahan. It is Birchbox, right? So Birchbox started out as they were basically just taking like small samples of uh, given products and they put them into the box and they mail it out to you. It's 10 bucks a month. And start as a website. You basically just sign up and every month you get a box. It is so simple and easy um, to, it, like even when my daughter didn't have a job, I was like, you need to cut all your non-essential spending. She didn't cut that because she's like, well, it's 10 bucks a month, you know. So there's a lot of things like that. Subscription services and apps are very popular. Good way to make money. Pandora, Spotify, there's a lot of them out there, right? So I'll give you some ideas. We're working on an app right now. It's a teaching app. It's a golf teaching app. And it's going to be a monthly subscription. So we'll have, we'll have a number of, of ideas. The, the main one we want people to buy is a subscription for $24 a month. $24.99 a month is what we're going to start it at. And then what we're going to do is we're going to upsell them to an annual subscription right there on the spot. So we'll give them like a $50 discount if they buy the annual versus the monthly. So let me give you some ideas of what should get, what, of how you should think about it if a subscription is a method you want to use to make money with your app. The first is you're going to have a certain number of people. So the happy path, we'll talk about the happy path. That's the that's what happens when everything goes good. Somebody comes in, they like the product, they buy the product, and they stay involved with the product, right? But you're going to have a number of people that when they're buying that product, they say, I like it so much, I want to go to the annual. And that's like the happiest of happy paths, right? So you really have a series of customer groups. One is the happiest of happy, they bought the annual. Two is the monthly. And then three, I'm only going to do three today, Three are the people that go in, they do the first registration page where they give you their email and their information. They get to the payment page and then they drop off. So making money with apps, when we talk about it and when we talk about subscriptions, everybody just thinks, I'm going to have an app, it's going to be $24.99 a month 
and boom, I'm going to make money and everything. But you need to consider the negative case scenarios and the positive for that matter. Like, how are you going to message the annual people, right? How are you going to email? When I, when I say message, I mean like remarket more products to them. So always, when we talk about monetizing apps, I want you to think at a little bit higher of a level than, hey, somebody just signed up for the subscription. We win, right? How are you going to treat that person over time? Like an annual subscription, right? You might be able to upsell them a certain product after a month, after two months. So what does that funnel look like for the perfect, perfect path? What does that funnel look like? And then the second path, the monthly subscription, right? We know from data, data says that in a subscription service, the average user lasts two, two and a half months. So that's how long some people stay for six, some people stay for one, but it, it works out being two and a half months is what the average person spends on a subscription service. So they're going to drop off. People are going to drop off. So what happens when somebody cancels? How are you going to, you're going to message them differently. You're, you might want to re-up them for another month at half the price. I don't know, whatever your product is, but you got to be thinking at this level, right? And then final, the third person is they gave you their email and they never signed up for anything. How are you going to message them? How could you possibly bring them into the ecosystem of your product? And that's what I want you to focus on. So three things with subscription. That's just three. I could break it down to a lot more as far as how you know you need to treat people and market to them. Give you a subscription story, okay? And I'm going to tell you this right now. If you are a Pandora user and you're a free user, get the subscription. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. Because when you're in a cabin and it's getting intimate between you and your significant other, and you got the right music on, and the candles, and the mood, and everything's just so nice. And then a commercial comes on for some product. The mood is completely ended. And it's $3.99 a month, or $2.99, whatever it is. Pay it. I'm telling you. You don't want to be in that situation. Been there. <laughs> you don't want to be there. You got to start over. It's just, it's annoying. Okay. Second way to make money with mobile apps, selling an item. So this is just kind of the old of the old of the old school, right? Like if you think about it, you, it, it's just like a website, right? Like let's say you have a website. In fact, for anybody out there that has a website that sells a product that's not in the app store right now, you're a derelict. You really are. You're, you're, your business is going nowhere. It's going to, it's, well, it might be going somewhere, but if you're just on the web at this point and you're not in the app store and you're selling a product and you're really doing good selling a product, you're really doing yourself and your company a disservice right now. You need to be in the app store. Okay. As many people that are searching for dog toys on Google, if there's a million searches a month for, for dog toys on Google, then there's a million in the app store. And here's the thing, let's say you're selling dog toys on Google and most of your traffic comes from, from searching, you know, from people searching and coming to your site and buying a product, you're competing with hundreds of thousands of other people selling pet products. If you have an app in the app store, you're competing with thousands, not that many. There's not that many apps for people selling pet stuff in the app store. Okay, so selling an item, that's the second way to make money through mobile apps. If you're an e-commerce, um, think of like just the things you do on your phone on a regular basis. If you're going to buy an airplane ticket, a rental car, you're going to get an Uber, a Lyft. If you're going to look for a res reservation at a restaurant, anything you're going to do is going to be selling an item. So anything you could potentially sell, any item, usually it's, a, it's actually a physical item, that's another way to make money with mobile apps. Okay. And, and you're going to start to see that a lot of these are going to cross over, you know, of different ways. You know, you could have, you could be selling an item that's a subscription, for instance. Okay, so number three, the number three way that people make money with apps or, or to make money in mobile apps is through ad revenue. So this is pretty straightforward. You know, you run ads on your, whatever your app is. Right. Let's say um, 
well, we were using Pandora earlier, so Pandora actually has ads in it, right? And they have two types of ads. They have, they have an ad that's a commercial, so it's a voice commercial for a particular product, and then they also have like a banner ad um, that just runs on the bottom. So the, the thing with ad revenues is that you have to have a ton of users and a ton of traffic. And the reason is, is because for every time an ad shows, it's like maybe, I don't know, it, it's a penny. Maybe it's five cents, right? So you can do the math and figure out how many times someone has to see that ad for it to be profitable, to drive any kind of revenue. Now, what a lot of companies do, like a company like Tender, right? Tender is a dating app. And what Tender does, they do a number, they do a number of what we're going to talk about next, but as well, but one of the things that they do is they run ads, okay? And the ads that they run, they have, um, and Pandora is the same way, they, they charge you a premium to get rid of the ads, right? So they say, hey, here's the ads. If you don't want the ads, then you need to pay $2.99 a month and we'll get rid of the ads. So that's what you need to keep in mind. Now with Tinder, what they do is their play to make money in their app is not through ads. It's not, it's a little bit through purchases now, but their play to make money was always, we want as many people using this app as possible. And then at some point, someone's going to buy us, right? Because we're going to have so many people, such an ecosystem of people on this app that a uh, third party is going to come in and buy us. That's what a lot of the dating apps do. Uh, but for ad revenues, it's a tough way to go unless you have a ton, ton, ton of users and a ton of content. Okay. The fourth way to make money with an app, and one of the, one of the more effective ones that you, you will see is in-app purchases. So when we talk about in-app purchases, um, I'll throw another word at you real quick. It's called freemium, right? We give you a free version of an app, and then we kind of get you hooked a little bit. And then we upsell you something. So we say like, like Tinder, another good example. They would have a thing. Um, in the early days, you could, you could look through as many people as you wanted on Tinder. Well, as time came along, what they did is they throttled you. So they'd only allow you to look at 100 profiles a day. And if you paid, I don't know what it is, but maybe it's 20 bucks a month, then you could see an unlimited amount of people a day. And they gave you other features as well. You could, um, you could search in other, like cities, like you could search in Chicago, New York, wherever. And you could be in San Francisco. But back in the day, you could only search in your one city. So they made an in-app purchase. So again, the freemium model, we give you a free version of the product. And then we kind of hook you a little bit. And then we upsell you with other products. So the number one person that's using this model in app purchases is class of clash of clans clash of clans is a game it's the number one grossing app of all time in the app store most money ever made on an app is clash of clans still to this day and what do they do they give the kids um, well it's mainly kids playing it people that are playing the game if they want to get to another level they can just buy their way up if they want more lives, they can buy more lives, right? And so they're basically, I mean, I think it's effed up myself. I think it's teaching kids to gamble. I think if, you know, if you're playing a, a game, you need to earn your way into the next level. You shouldn't be able to buy your way into the next level. That's stupid. Not a fan. Um, and, you know, I know some people, some parents who've had to, like, dispute charges with their credit card company because when you sign up, when your kid signs up for Clash of Clans, it's happened to my girlfriend. Um, you have to like you have to use your credit card on iTunes to get that app. So kid signs, oh, I want to play Clash of Clans. Dad, I want to play Clash of Clans. And you want to shut the kid up. So you say, Yeah, sure, get Clash of Clans. And they go, Oh, we need a credit card. Well, what do you need a credit card for? I don't know. I don't know what you need a credit card for. You put it in. Actually, it's you don't even need to put the credit card in. The credit card is actually attached to your iTunes account. So now, so now my kid's playing Clash of Clans with my credit card. And my kid is the kind of kid that's not going to ask, hey, dad, can I, you know, spend some money on the game? They just start doing it or they don't realize they're doing it because they're kids. And the next thing you know, you got a $750 charge on your credit card. It happens. So 
that's one of the ways to do it. Um, that's probably not as ethical or a good example of it, but literally that's what's happening in this world. So anything that you can give a free service and then upsell somebody. So it'd be the same as kind of like a trial period. We're going to give you a seven day trial. And then at that point, we're going to, we're going to start charging you. So in-app purchases, um, pretty much a good way to go. You'll see a lot of apps that you'll get that are free and then you get inside of them and they don't really do much until you actually purchase something. It's kind of annoying as a consumer to get an app and be like, oh, this is so cool. Oh, it doesn't do that. Oh, I got to pay for that. But, you know, if it's a premium, if it's a good product and somebody's willing to pay for it, it's great. And as a developer or as a person creating an app and coming up with a business idea, again, you got to figure out a way to monetize your app. So in-app purchases are one of the big ones. The fifth way to make money with mobile apps is selling user data. So I'll cycle back to Tender again. Like if you don't think that the apps you're using are selling your data to like marketing companies so that they can remarket other products to you, you're a fool because they are. So this one's kind of like ad revenue though. You need a lot of users and you need a lot of data. And it's a tough strategy actually because um, I'll give you a personal story. I have a a mobile app, it's called Shoe Swipe, right? And speaking of Tinder, it's exactly like Tinder. You swipe through left and right of, we have, I think, 60,000 shoes in there. It's very addictive. So the average person looks at like 121 pairs of shoes. And that's just random stuff that we're serving up to them. There's not like any intelligence behind it or whatnot. So people are just looking through shoes left and right. And they are, so we know, we know a great great deal about individual people. So I could say like Monica from San Francisco looked at 300 pairs of shoes and of the 300 pairs of shoes, she liked 22% of them. And of those 22%, there's four major brands that she likes. She likes Aldo, Jeffrey Campbell. I don't know a lot about shoes. What are some other women's brands of shoes? Jeffrey Campbell. I don't know. Anyway, you know, whatever. But She's looking at shoes, and so I know that's what Monica likes. I know the same thing about Cynthia. I know the same thing about Ronald, right? I know of all this 70,000 people that have installed and used that app, like exactly what they want, exactly what they like. Now, I could turn around and sell all that data back to Zappos or other shoe companies so they could actually say like, Oh, we have a list of 70,000 people, and here's the top four brands they like. Here's the actual shoes that they like. So now when they do emails to those people, instead of sending an email out to 70,000 women that are between the ages of 18 and 30, they can now send out 70,000 personally tailored emails to those people. Say so like, Monica gets Aldo emails with a lot of Aldo shoes on them. Uh, Sylvia gets a bunch with Jeffrey Campbell in them, right? So you can start to see how they can segment and market and remarket better. Now, selling the data is the way to make money. Now, I'm not selling that data right now. If anybody wants that data and wants to buy it, get in contact with me. JeremyCallahan.com. Phone number is on the site. But yeah, I could resell that data. Now, I actually have to go out and find if I wanted to do this, if I wanted to resell that data, I actually have to go out and find the company, identify the company, and then I'd have to identify whoever at the company. I guess it would be someone in business development that would uh, perhaps want to buy that data. I'd say if you're going to sell user data as a strategy to make money for your app, like the only strategy to make money for your app, you need to identify exactly what data you're going to get and start the relationship now and make sure that the person you're selling to actually wants that kind of data, right? Don't just assume, oh, I'm going to make all this data. It's going to be awesome. Like I have data, right? I have shoe data on individual people. I don't know if Zappos wants it. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't, right? But I didn't build the app with that in mind. Now, if I were to build that app with that in mind, I'd make sure I was talking to somebody at Zappos prior to it saying, what exactly do you want? Because they might not want anything what I have. They may, they may not right? Okay. Another sixth way to make money with mobile apps. Lead generation. 
lead generation for your business. Who doesn't want more leads? Who wants leads? Everybody wants leads, right? Everybody wants potential new business and leads, quality leads, quality people coming in. So there's a lot of apps out there that are nothing more than lead generation things, okay? Give you a perfect example. I'll give you two examples. The first one is Safeway, supermarket, right? They're a supermarket. You say, well, how are they getting leads? Well, they created an app that basically allows people to clip coupons, right? It's the same thing they used to have. They have a club card, right? So when you go to the, when you go shopping, you see a club card price. Spaghetti sauce is $3. With the club card, it's $1.99. Well, over time, people stopped wanting to bring cards to the, to, the, um, to the grocery store and they want to use their phone. Okay, so they linked the club card to the phone. Very good. And then on top of that, what they did is they were able to give coupons, manufacturer coupons that you could actually go through and click in your phone. So this is handy because what it's basically doing is it doesn't really serve Safeway in any other way except for to make you create shopping lists on your app so that when you go to the store, you actually go to that store, right? As far as I know, Trader Joe's doesn't have an app that I can create a shopping list, even though that's where I shop all the time, right? If I were a new customer to Trader Joe's, I might say, or, or just I didn't know about them, I'd be like, oh, they have an app. Oh, look at that. You can actually shop for stuff on the app. Like Amazon and Whole Foods, they're, they're starting to do a lot of stuff with this now where you're gonna be actually able to, to basically shop and then show up at this, well, they already have that. You can actually show up at the store and pick it up or someone can deliver it to your house. But you can see where this innovation is going, right? Because you're getting people excited about shopping, grocery shopping, which is something everybody does, but you're potentially getting new customers now because you have an app and the app does something that is unique, right? I'll give you a second example. And this is for anybody out there that is any kind of social influencer. Like if you're on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, whatever, and you have hundreds of thousands, millions of users, and you don't have a mobile app, you need to get with it. Seriously. I, 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 I have this, uh, this guy, right? His name is Grant Cardone. I'll give you a perfect example. He's got an app, and it's called GCTV, Grant Cardone Television. And all it is is to get you into his ecosystem. So this guy's everywhere, right? He's on every social platform there is. He blogs, he videos, he's on talk shows, he's everywhere. But what he realized was that his content, if it was on Facebook, like a Facebook Live, it just lives on Facebook. And then the same thing with YouTube. And so what he did is he realized there's a lot of people searching for his name on Google and when they come in and they sign up for something, he has an email. And now you're in the ecosystem. He can market to you. And then he expanded it out a little and said, well, there's a lot of people searching for me in the app store. Potential customers, right? So he makes an app, puts all the content, all his, his television or all his, um, his like streaming content into one place. So there's a certain amount of people that didn't find him on YouTube or Facebook, the majority of the people, that's how they find him. There's certain people that just found him in the app store. They install an app. When they sign up for the app, they put in their email. Boom, lead. Now he's got your email. Now he can market to you all his products. And his primary product is a sales program, a sales training program. I think it's like five, five grand. So that's his primary thing that he's trying to get people involved with. So you can see Lead generation, right? Safeway, lead generation. We want more people. We want new customers. Can an app, can, is there an app, is there a way out there an app can generate more leads for you, right? Because it's not just like no one's signing up for a subscription, so you're not seeing money coming in, but you're seeing leads come in. And those leads are converting to customers, and you're selling them a product, and they're in the ecosystem. So that's the main idea behind lead generation. All right. Let's, uh, let's recap. We'll play the game and go from there. So, you know, you need, your app needs to make money, and there's no reason to start building an app without a plan to make money. If you don't have, say you have an idea for an app, and you're not sure about it, how to make money with it, 
then um, there's two things you can do. The first thing is you can look me up, jeremycallahan.com. All my contact information is there. You can email me, text me, whatever. Get in contact with me. We can have a, a more specific conversation to your idea and how it can make money. And then the, the second thing I do is every Tuesday night at 5.30 Pacific, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, I do a show, a Facebook Live, to app or not to app, where I actually take ideas from people that put them in the comments or people that email me, and I discuss how you can make money with that particular app and if it's something that's worth pursuing, right? So let's talk about the six ways. Number one, monthly subscription. Number two, sell an item. Number three, ad revenues. Number four, in-app purchases. Number five, sell that user data. And number six, lead generation. All right. So normally at this port, 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 port part of the show, I uh, like to take a, an email or something that somebody sent me and read it on the air and respond to it. But today we'll do something a little different. And uh, I'm going to end the show. I'm going to tell you about an app. And then I want you to tell me how it's going to make money. Okay, so the app is called Class Hoppers. It's an app. It's a fitness app. And what it allows you to do is to say you're in Chicago and you want to work out. It'll basically take your location and it'll show you all the gyms and all the yoga studios and all the Pilates and everything you could possibly think of workout-wise, boot camps. And it'll show you all the classes around you and based by time, 5.30, 6.30, where they start, where they're located, how far they are from you. Okay? Now, you tell me how you can make money with that app, and then I'll, I'll tell you how it actually makes money. Let's see what you can do. Of the six things, let's go through the six things and we'll see which one it is, right? So, number one was subscriptions. It is not a subscription service. I, I guess it potentially could be, but it is not a subscription service. Number two was selling an item. Well, they're definitely selling an item, right? So if you say, let's, let's say you pick a class at 6.30 at a yoga studio. So you actually got to pay for that class. It's not like you can just go for free, right? So you pay for that class. So the class, when you pay for the class, let's say it's 15 bucks. You pay 15 to the yoga place, and then on top of that, Class Hoppers takes, I think they tar charge $1.50 for a booking fee, right? So that's where they're making their money. They're actually making their money selling, it's not really selling an item, because there's not really, well, I guess it's a class, it's not like it's a hard item, though, it's not like um, you're purchasing something like a, I don't know, like whatever this is, right, this pouch. So, but you are purchasing, so you are selling an item, ad revenues, Potentially, but they're not running ads on their network or on their app. Um, it's more just find a class, sign up for a class. In-app purchases, ding, 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 ding. Yes, in-app purchases for sure. You're actually purchasing an item in the app. And then um, they're not selling user data, number five. Lead generation. Yeah, although I, I, I guess they could sell the user data as well. So like, right, we're selling a class. Actually, we're just lining up a purchase, which is a lead generation for the gym. And then we take a fee out of that. So that's, that's where Class Hoppers makes their money on that, on that transaction fee, right? But they could potentially sell user data back to the gym. They could say like, hey, these 20 people signed up for a class this month. Would you like to remarket to them? We'll, chart, we'll sell that list to you for $150 or whatever, however much they can value one email app. So... There's that way. I don't know. There's probably a lot of ways you could actually make money from, from selling the user data back. Um, and then the final one was lead generation. So I think it's a good... It, that app probably needs a little work in that. You know, the lead generation, the gym is actually getting the lead. But they do have a network of leads now, right? Like, let's say for the month, they get 2,000 people signing up for classes. So now they have 2,000 leads. So now they can remarket to them, maybe a separate item. Um, I don't know, just saying headphones. I don't think headphones is a good one, but something like that, like they could potentially resell an item. If the owner of the app had their own like workout program, like maybe a, 
like a workout app program, like a 30 day boot camp or something. There you go. There's an upsell. There's another item to sell somebody. Okay. So let's just wrap it up. Um, hope, uh, hope you figured out a way to make money with your app by listening to the podcast today. And again, if you need to get in contact with me and you need to figure out a way, if you have an idea and you need to turn it into, you know, a monetization strategy, let's, uh, connect jeremycallahan.com. Thanks for joining me and I will see you next week. And let me tell you, when it comes to apps, I love apps and you know, apps are changing lives. Make no mistake about it. You know, what do you want to learn today? There's an app for it. You know, you got a health problem, got ADD, can't focus, can't sleep at night. There's a meditation app you can get involved with. Apps are saving lives. They're changing the world and you should be involved in it. You should turn your idea into a money-making machine and make money while you sleep. Signing off. Have a great day.